Good morning, everyone. You're listening to Trace Elements Radio, live with me, Tracy Kennedy. How are you guys doing today? I hope you can hear me. Um, my voice may be a little soft. I just had a marathon teaching session with Cash. Hope, holy crap. Um, I hope you're checking that out. If you're new to his work, um, you can catch up in a couple weeks. I think if you listen to um, this week's teaching and last week's teaching, pretty much give you an idea of what we're doing, why we're doing it, as a matter of fact. Because I think you need to know what's going on here. The effects that we're feeling on this planet, including the slowdown of Earth's rotation, increase in earthquakes, fireballs, meteors in our atmosphere, increase in meteorite impacts on the ground, volcanic eruptions, sinkholes, global cooling, global warming, disruptions of the Gulf Stream, the jet streams, more frequent hurricanes, lightning, Tornadoes, floods, droughts, strange and new types of clouds, new sounds, crop failure, pole shifts, all of this happening at one time. We've talked about these events, not isolated, that have actually been recorded through history at certain changes. Time-changing events, events that changed our atmosphere. We are seeing these changes now. For many reasons, of course. Some of it is because of what we're eating. Some of it is because they're changing what we're eating, specifically because... Crops from a hundred years ago would not live here. Plain and simple. Crops a hundred years old would not survive on this planet right now. It's miraculous that there are people here a hundred years old. It really is. I'm, um, pretty shocked at the catastrophic events and we're going to be walking through these. I realize and I have had some messages that want me to talk about Trump and the elections and stuff. What can I say about that really? It's very interesting to me that people get excited over who their next controller is. I don't know what to say about that at this point. If you don't get, these guys are all the same people. I don't, I, I don't know. You know, Texas Department of Public Safety upheld the decision to fire the trooper who arrested Sarah Blunt. Well, yeah, (laughs) yeah, he got what he deserved. It's strange, but we have to realize that the powers that be are never going to give up control. Not now, not ever. They just won't, guys. What do you think you're going to do about that? Seriously, what do you think you're going to do about that? Because we have some very bad news. Because we lost another sister of the resistance. Several unknown assailants broke into Kasiri's home. This was a woman in Honduras. Indigenous leader, Berta Sirius, assassinated in her own home. 
the rape of South America is absolutely escalating. This is why the Zika virus, this is why the insane amount of violence on Native reserves. And know that some of that is Native on Native too. Because when you're raised in generational concentration camps, things do not go well for you. They don't. We just had a little girl, five years old as a matter of fact, um, beaten up by other indigenous kids. This is in Ontario. So, well, it's about, I think, five hours north of Sioux Lookout. I've been there before. It is a little piece of hell on earth. Hell to the point where there are rape gangs that actually run around. But most reservations are like that. These are not resorts. These are concentration camps that have raised a new group of people. People that are so desperate and have lost their souls to such an extent that they're almost you can't save these people. Now it's a five year old girl. She was returned home, again, on her northern Ontario First Nations. It took months. She was beaten so brutally. She was hospitalized. The attack <clears throat> has shaken the community, of course, raising questions of safety for its members. But if you've ever been to a reserve... And I realize we're here, we hear so many great stories. I listen to someone who will remain nameless telling me that he went to a reserve, was invited to an ancient native ritual, and they were drinking alcohol. I don't know, were they smoking crack too? That's not native, guys. And to even come out supposed to be a truth, they're saying that that was a good thing. You're part of the problem. So he got stoned high and was drinking with a bunch of natives and they pretended to do a ritual. I'm sure because he was paying for it. That is such bullshit. Words cannot express how much I hate that guy. Now this attack actually took place September 16th, 2015. I'm pretty sure that Tudak and, and I spoke about this on our show. This is so far north that you have to fly in. So it's about 500 kilometers north of Sioux Lookout, Ontario. The little girl's injuries, so severe that she had to undergo three surgeries. being investigated, of course, by the First Nations police force, police services, but this organization services 35 First Nations communities, the majority of them fly in. And although the force's spokesperson said they couldn't speak much, it said it was involving other children, children. Her aunt said that she's okay. Still, the girl isn't attending school and she no longer leaves the house. The aunt said the incident has left her worried over the fa safety of her own children. Um, yeah. How do you not notice that the children in your community are this aft up. I have to say aft because I promise not to say fuck so much. <laughs> I 
in that one time, and it's just to get it out of my system. That was it's seal and French, guys. I I speak French. Could be I may be talking about seals. You don't know that. <laughs> anyway, how do you not notice that your children are that screwed up? How do you not notice that there are rape gangs? How do you not notice that women are not safe there? And I hate to say it, guys. Native men are as dangerous now as the RCMP. Now, of course, not all. And don't be sending me lots of emails saying, you can tell, you say all Native men are. There will never be an all in any group. But there's absolutely a most. You have to get off the reserve. You have to get off the alcohol and the crack and whatever you're doing. And get away from those places. Because they're sick. They were meant to be sick. They were meant to raise a group of I don't even know how to say it. They thought you'd be dead by now. And the ones who weren't dead would be so dangerous that you'd work for them. So this is not in Canada only, of course. Turtle Mountain Indian Reserve. That's 18 arrests on the 2nd. So yesterday. Operation targeting fugitives on, on this Turtle Mountain Indian Reserve in North Dakota. 18 arrests. U.S. Marshal Service and the Bureau of Indian Affairs conducted Operation Northern Lights. Actually, it started Tuesday. Federal, state, local agencies. Similar sweep on Spirit Lake Indian Reserve in December resulted in 22 arrests. Tribal lands are now viewed as a safe haven for people wanted on state or local warrants. State authorities can arrest only non-enrolled members on a reservation. And not all tribal governments have extradition laws in place to transfer an enrolled member to a state or local jurisdiction. They are not American. Say it with me now. Not American. .com. So you have to make extradition treaties to get there. Although, of course, we know that Americans have a tendency to do whatever the heck they want, whenever the heck they want to do it. This is the truth. And I realize people still don't get what you've done, what's been done. Not you, you haven't done it. What's been done to Native people? And hearing comments and listening to Listening to other people talk like they're still doing okay. It's going to be fine. It's not as bad as it was. For a hundred years, they weren't allowed to speak their language. A hundred million of them are dead from the first wave of mostly infectious diseases. This wasn't in the wars, really. This was about the people coming over. And the first people who came over en masse were released from hospitals because they were sick. This is how it's done. This is how it's done here. This is how it's done in Africa. This is exactly how it was done all across Europe. Because we had a chance for none of this to be happening on the planet right now. Several times. 
you screwed up, everyone. Well, if that screwed up so much, let me give you an example. And I know we've talked about this before, but it's important. Because when we go on to talk about how sick this planet is, we have to realize that the people who are in control, who tell you who you're going to vote for, because they present them in front of your face, they pay for them to wear pretty clothes and and speak in somewhat buttery voices on television for you. They have set this up. The absolute devastation of planet Earth, because we're, we're here now. <laughs> I laugh because I can't freaking believe it. So one of the Gauls, king of the Gauls, was very close to defeating the Roman army. Very, very close. Rome, who had slaves from what they knew of as the world at the time. All across Europe, some of Africa. They didn't get much past um, China because China would have beat them back because they are very bloody. They will kill you to death. <laughs> you know what I mean? would kill you to death. So, this is how he almost won. Very, very close. So an army marches on its stomach. Really good analogy for armies. What he did, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, is burn every village as Rome was following him. The Roman armies. Um, the guy who later would be named Caesar. He wasn't Caesar yet. Couldn't feed his troops. So he was following, but they were getting slower and slower. The reason why this Gaul was taken hostage. Caesar became Caesar that we know of. The reason why they raped all the rest of Europe. The reason why we still have their system now, the reason why we have Christianity now is because when this Gaul got to his own village, the elders of the village talked him out of burning the fields down. Long story short, Rome got there, beat their ass. The end. All of this stuff. Same controllers rule us now. Exact same. Same families. Guys who later became popes. Now the shocking amount of cancers around the leaking New York plant near New York City outrageously too close to friggin' me. Tens of thousands of cases recently reported. I mean, within the last six months. And there's more elsewhere in the U.S. Why this story is not being covered by everyone? I don't know. I don't know. The Indian Point nuclear plant now has what they're calling a middle school cancer cluster, much like we had in um, Alberta on the natives' reserves, mostly because they can't get medical attention. And because of the fracking that has been done. Now, these things have been happening in this area since June 2014, absolutely known. Now, Vicki Fox, a teacher of social studies, I guess that doesn't really matter, um, Yorktown Heights, less than 10 miles from Indian Plant. She 
she said she can't tell how many teachers, how many students are either survivors of cancer or have it, specifically thyroid cancer, which is specifically radiation. And have you not noticed the amount of people around you getting cancer? It can't just be here. And getting it and dying from it faster than I've ever seen in my life. People who were healthy too, not smokers, not drinkers. One that I know that I just found out yesterday passed away long distance runner. So you have to be stupidly in shape ridiculously in shape from that. So we are going through a catastrophe in Indian Point right now. Not talked about. We want our sovereignty. Sovereignty, <laughs> you're not going to get anybody's sovereignty on a planet that's so close to just wiping us freaking out. I can't see it any other way, guys. All you have to do is look around even a little bit. This is an alarming story. And I thought of it as an alarming story ever since I started reaching it. Telling you years ago, as Chief Charles Tudok and I told you, Fukushima was going to set off a chain of events that are unstoppable. So why everyone isn't covering it, I don't know. But the thyroid cancer is the biggest shocker, I guess. Grossly underreported worldwide, especially United States, because you guys would rather, I don't know what. Dancing with the stars? <laughs> Not you guys listening, but even... I listened to the hosts, other hosts... Of course, not just on one station. I'm played on several stations. And I don't know. I think there's this overwhelming need of sucking thumb and rocking back and forth. It's the way that nuclear plants in the world operates. They all admit, emit radiation. All. Right? All. There is no nuclear plant that does not admit emit radiation. Not anywhere. Not ever. Now, whether in um, large doses, in case of a leak, or smart, small do doses... It still emits it anyway. It's just the way it operates. We come from a world where Chernobyl happened. We've been taught in schools that thyroid cancer is caused by radiation. You have people in the area of Indian Point, en masse, 20,000 people diagnosed with cancer over the last five years. I've heard 15 years, but that's not true. Five. More than anywhere in the United States. And this is an uncontrollable flow coming from the nuclear plant. Actual releases are trillions of times higher than reported during the last leak. Trillions of times. There are cracks in multiple spent fuel pools. We already know this. And they can't stop it. So, there's an ongoing fish famine, of course, along the West Coast. And 
the death, severe fishery implosion. Since, surprisingly, 2011, they're going, um, we don't know why. You don't know why. <laughs> really. In these strange, somewhat supposedly mysterious epidemics. Near another radioactive site, people are suffering from hallucinations now. They cry, they howl, they tear their hair out. They're in a zombie-like state with actual swollen brains. Brains. These are some of the zombie events I've been telling you about. You know the place that I told you, the sleeping village? That we talked about several times. A residence of Kalachi. Kalachi, I think that's how you say it. Have been experiencing health problems, suffering memory loss, hallucinations, sleeping for days. Kalachi was a site for uranium mining. Mystery solved. There's always been a background of uranium. So there has always been strangeness there. But the villagers finally have spoken. They said the illness has to do with uranium mining. Because once again, when we've heard reports, they didn't actually speak to anyone from there. Other than to talk about the illness. Not talk about what was really going on. And of course, back January, January last year, when we talked about the strange waves of occurrences, that it actually started once again in 2014. People starting to lose it. Well, the root of the terrifying illness, old Soviet uranium mines. Also a release of radon gas. Also, well, radon gas acts as a narcotic substance. And um, anesthetic, so it makes you sleepy. So the radon gas from nearby mines have been seeping to the, to the surface for years. Radiation is actually 17 high, times higher than normal background. So, mystery solved. It wasn't zombies. I'd have preferred it was zombies, to be honest. Then the uncontrollable contamination that we're experiencing right now. And I, I saw that the Super Tuesday primaries um, spiked a Search on how you move to Canada. Canada's no better, guys, so can't run from this. Although, come on by. We don't even get winter anymore, so it's becoming a fun place to live. If you go to Turtle Island News. Oh, no, not anymore. Well, you could go there. It's working now. The link, thank God. But if you go to TraceElementsRadio.com. You can see the articles from today. Now, there are over 180 infrared videos showing the extent of the methane pollution across the United States. And just as the worst methane leak in California's history is sealed, U.S. EPA acknowledged that actually America pollutes way more methane than previously estimated. Earthworks, a group that filmed the videos revealing the scope of the methane disaster in Los Angeles County and released a map of 180 infrared videos of oil and gas methane pollution events across the country right now. Right now. Now the map 
created with the help of Frack Tracker Alliance, includes two new videos that show the national methane pollution problem. The first one is of a well near Colorado. The second one is a massive pipeline blowout in North Dakota, the Bracken Shale region. November 2012, the voters in Longmount, Longmount? Yeah, I think that's the name of it, banned fracking to protect our health, well-being, which is a good idea. The air we breathe is subject to toxic trespass from extreme extraction in communities and it's long past time for the government to stop tinkering stop fracking stop drilling we've been talking about this speaking about this and you know we finally see air pollution that's all around us you should be concerned about how harmful this is to health the environmental impacts of methane, other pollutants released from wells. It's unmeasurable. And of course, this happens a lot around tribal places. Of course, if you go to the um, Dakota Reserve Council and the three affiliated tribes, they, of course, value their health and their land. And with more being added daily now, the 108 plus infrared or 180 plus infrared that started filming just in 2014 exposed an otherwise invisible air pollutant from oil and gas development. It crisscrosses the country. what's going on right now and the North Texas methane leak is larger than Porter Ranch the Los Angeles gas leak is critical methane is erupting from multiple sites study shows that natural gas is spewing from more than 1,000 places in Manhattan alone We have stratospheric warming, bringing a cold snap over the UK. And a strange incident, 4,000 miles from home, a rare pelican turns up in Florida because they can no longer navigate. Guess, and of course, Indonesia issues a tsunami warning. Depends on how and when you looked at that warning. I had 8.3 yesterday. Now they're saying it's 7.9. I don't know. Is that better? <laughs> anyway, it's bad. We had another sinkhole just burst open along um, Pacifica, California coastline. 24 dead, 30 missing after floods in Angola. A water spout formed over, well, near Pakistan. Again, volcano, Guatemala. 23 dead dolphins being investigated in Argentina. Um, call me, I'll tell you what's up. And again, mysterious booms. Not so mysterious, really, if you've looked. Now, um, oh, hold on, guys. Hold on, everybody. They're having problems on my station. I'm going to see what happens. See if I can fix it. And uh, why don't I, why don't I play a little bit of music for you and see if I can fix it on the other station. I'll be right back. 
Okay, I think we got it all fixed now. How you doing, everybody? Okay, sorry about that. Um, you guys are blowing me up today, which is a good thing, not in a bad way. So um, we crashed the server. Fast cast, we kicked your ass. <laughs> it's awesome. Hey, you want to talk about something weird? Still could have something to do with the methane. Could have been a meteor. Could have been something else. I'm not sure. But um, emergency crews find no evidence after the reports, like several reports of a plane crash near Peggy's Cove. Peggy's Cove is where they kept the dolphins, tortured them to death. Well, not really tortured, but train them to death, call it that. So an extensive search in Terrence Bay, Nova Scotia, ended after emergency officials found no signs of the reported plane crash. Now this was um, spoken about on Tuesday evening. Halifax Regional Fire Department said that it received 911 calls Tuesday. Five different fire stations. We went from all over. They saw something in the sky explode. You could see that something basically was lowering itself, going down, 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 and then suddenly it broke in two and then disappeared. So they're looking for de debris to confirm the report. Equipment that goes off when the um, aircraft is in distress should have been signaled. Like they didn't see or receive any emergency locator transmitters. It's weird. And there's also no planes missing, none even overdue. It could have been a passenger plane smoke from the trail um, to fire, I guess, to descending to the water goes through your mind. They just don't know. We have no idea what that was, guys. It's just disappeared. We also have, and this guy was brave beyond belief, as a matter of fact, Geez, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if what's going on with my uh, computer today. I don't know. Anyway, a Canadian man dived through a chemtrail. Lives to tell his story, but, you know, I'm still in shock. So why is it? If a person poisons you on the ground, they are charged with a crime, unless it's a big corporation like United States. Canada, anybody in the UK. Anyway, but they spray the same poison in the air as, you know, chemicals. They get raises, bonuses, promotions, other perks of the job. And oh yeah, of course, freedom from trial, no arrest, no ongoing public investigation. How far does the chemtrail rabbit hole go? Are politicians getting special perks to look the other way? While well, the forests are dying, oceans are radiated, weather patterns and storms are altered, and babies burn. They probably get paid hundreds of thousands a year, paid by your taxes, to watch you slowly die, while pretending to be agents of change that you can believe in. Most, but not all, of course, lap it right up. It's enough. They've found leadership who will look the other way. And it feels right, I guess. Still, the awakening does continue. That at some point, one may ask, where is the outrage? As chemtrails alter everything on Earth, destroy all 
that live. Because that's already dead and it's already happened. The lack of public reaction makes the Red Deer skydiver, Jason Murphy, all the more of a hero. Not only is he educating the fluoridated masses towards chemtrails, he's also, well, actually has skydived through a chemtrail. And I have a picture. Now, Joseph Murphy, Murphy from him. I'm still shocked that I was actually in the chemtrail cloud. It burned to breathe it in. I had a headache and felt a notch dumber for the rest of the day. The RCMP won't investigate a crime that I tasted in the sky. They've been given orders not to do their jobs. RCMP, criminal organization, well, and rapist too. They actually, the guys rape the other female RCMP officer, so you wouldn't really expect them to be noble or honorable. So it's pretty hard to describe in words. This is just Murray. Murphy. I've been in natural clouds before. They don't burn to breathe. It was like something out of the movies. We exited the plane, stabilized, and then we were going straight towards the chemical cloud. It must have been around 11,000 feet or, or so. The burning started and was the worst while I was in the chemical cloud. As soon as we got through it, the burning started to go away. I had a pretty good headache for the rest of the day. Felt a little dumber than usual. Well, yeah. <laughs> don't go in there. I don't know why he, I guess bravery to jump in there. I certainly would have. But you want to talk about the heavy, symbolic thing that just happened? A bear sweated a bald eagle on the Kodiak Island, Alaska. And it was pictured. And the eagle swooped down on the bear and her cub as they were eating a dead whale, another one, in Kodiak, Alaska. Of course, there's nothing wrong with eating um, a dead whale. Animals know things that we don't know, or at least have forgotten that we need to let meat sit or we can't digest it. That's pretty much all mammals. Anyway, it's a dramatic moment that a bear took out an American bald eagle in one fell swoop. And after getting too close to her cub and his food, the bird had approached the bear and her youngster. The eagle's other eagles had been swooping down on the pair but managed to keep a respectable distance. When the eagle got too close, I angered. Swooped down, and the bear grabbed it, killed it, knocked it to the ground. Bears are protective of their food, of course, and their babies. The mayor made sure that the eagle was not going to threaten her cub anymore. Interesting image. I'm sure that was just, I don't know, what do we call that, a coincidence? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't. Okay, how much time we have? Okay, 10 more minutes. We also have strange signals. Confirmed this time that have been detected coming from outside our galaxy. Astronomers have detected repeating blasts of radio signals coming from deep space. 
These short-lived signals are called fast radio bursts. We've talked about them before. And although we've heard of them, they were always thought to be a one-off event coming from random locations. But for the first time ever, researchers have now heard a repeating signal emerging from one signal source outside of our galaxy. Ten bursts, all coming from the exact same direction, were detected last May and June. When the astronomers looked at the data, they found that another burst, this is one that we've talked about before, happened in 2012. But what it was a surprise is that this originated from the exact same place. Three times. Suggesting something is happening there regularly <laughs> to produce extremely short and intense signals. So you know that you've been thinking. I know what you've been thinking. I don't blame you. So let's clear up a lot of upfront stuff. Let's talk about the bursts and explanations outside, oh my god, it's aliens, although I'm leading towards, oh my god, it's aliens at this point. So ever since they were first discovered, this is back in 2007, astronomers have been grasping, searching for any sign of them coming from the same spot twice, something that would help them figure out what the hell's going on? So again, we have um, Paul Schultz from McGill University here in Canada going through mounds of data collected from a radio telescope in Peru or Puerto Rico. He found these unusual patterns, six of them arriving within 10 minutes of each other, and four more spread out, all coming from the exact same location. He knew that the discovery would be important. It's like the wow signal, but this is something a little different. Researchers don't have enough data to pinpoint exactly where the bursts are coming from. Now, the next part is an extrapolation. I think they can't pinpoint it because the object is moving. And it kind of looks like it's moving towards us. I put up pictures of this, I think back in 2012. I'm going to have to look again and repost it today because I'm sure we got an object. Anyway, the team is pretty sure... They're outside the galaxy at this point, and based on the amount of plasma they're dispersing, it's pretty complicated measurement. Basically, 10 newly detected FRBs, as well as the 2012 burst, so we have 2007-2012, all had three times the maximum dispersion measure you'd expect from a source within the Milky Way. That point of origin in itself makes a repeating radio burst unique. There have been other, well, 16 that I know of, FRBs that they found that all appear within our galaxy. The other, But the other differences don't stop there. Not only did these bursts repeat, but their brightness, their spectra, basically differ. They're changing colors. They're trooper transforming, basically. So yeah, doctor, I would say that's a little different. <laughs> so anyway, Laura um, Spittler from the Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy in Germany, said, yeah, that's different. Now this 
led the whole research groups to suggest that the repeating births actually are a whole new type of FRB. Um, aliens coming to destroy Earth. No, they didn't say that. That was that was me. And we don't know. I don't know. Destroy. Maybe they're coming to get us. If they're coming to pick me up, hurry up. Anyway, so the timing of the discovery, somewhat coincidental. Because last week, they thought they were getting close to understanding them all once and for all. Scientists managed to pinpoint the exact location of one of the births for the first time. And we'll continue. You're listening to Trace Elements Radio. You're listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to, um, that's not the name of my thing. <laughs> I'm really tired. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm so tired. This is a freaking marathon class. What I can tell you about cash. And if you haven't listened before, uh, you can catch up. And I think if you listen to the last couple weeks, the last four classes really, you'll change your mind about what you thought. I, I know for a fact that this stuff works. It's very hard for me to explain because you'd have to, you'd have to be with us the whole time. But I've been making the technology so it can be done in the house without that much work it's easier if you've gone through the whole thing but I tried my broadcaster so what is that it's a communication device it worked proven worked because I didn't tell the person who I was sending a mess- message to that I was doing it. They showed up the next day and said that it worked. It looks like a combination of an onk and a widget. You know, the thing that looks like a hook a little bit. So you can use the technology in a lot of ways. The reason I think, well, that the elite aren't going to change, that there's no amount of protesting going to stop it. It's because an Eaton student who owned a toddler rape video was allowed to use a false name to protect his wealthy family. So Eaton College pupil Andrew Picard, interesting last name, who owned 1,183 indecent images of children, as well as videos of a three-year-old being raped and children being forced to have sex with dogs, was allowed to use his mother's name in the UK courts in order to protect his family's reputation. Picard is apparently his real name is Andrew Beckman spelt in a very Germanic looking way was spared jail and an 18 month suspension was suspended sentence for 10 courts possessing child porn a lot of it however evidence has emerged that the UK court allowed him to use his mother's maiden name in order to protect his family. Picard's father, Philip J. Bachman, extremely wealthy lawyer, whose clients include Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan. So you don't have to be twisted to be rich, but apparently helps. Now during this trial, 
trial of Picard, the judge commented, your family didn't deserve that suffering. His family didn't deserve that. But as a consequence of this sort of offending, your privileged background and where you were going to school at a degree of frisance to the reporting. Interesting choice of words. I'd need a whole day to tell you what that word means. But all references to the name Bokeman had been deleted from the internet, cast an article from the Daily Mirror, which has now mysteriously been deleted. He may have chose to use his mother's maiden name before his arrest, but there is a U.S. local newspaper that shows that he used Bokeman as recently as 2015. Now, I do have a copy of the full deleted Mirror, uh, Mirror article, complete with the article mentioning his father, and a picture which confirms this is the same f- person. Now, allowing a defendant to use a false name is only acceptable with the agreement of the court. It is usually reserved to protect identities of family members in extreme danger. Obviously, his family is very well versed in, versed in the art of persuasion. This is why I'm thinking it's not going to change. Ever. And in Canada, of course, powers that be will never freaking get over themselves. Because the St. Anne's Residential School survivor is trying to reopen the claims case because files have gone mysteriously missing. They're not going to look into it. They won't. They will do what they're doing now. They will look at it a little bit. They will look at it enough to gloss over Okay, another case in point. New York Times um, reporter who exposed CIA mind control program has just been found strangled to death. And it looks like that's done. She was murdered for questioning the powers that be. Her article called Sharing Their Demons on the Web was widely read, praised at the time of her writing. She pointed out that people felt targeted, likely created in an abusive relationship between herself and government officials. And even if she never understood that that was part of what was going on. It's important to understand that Kershaw also points out mind control by the government officials being used on its own citizens is actually not illegal. The CIA, however, may see this as a non-lethal method of achieving goals. Now, according to Abri report, all of this changed in the years following Kershaw's article. And when Ms. Kershaw wrote her article, psychotronic warfare was not legal in the U.S. or against U.S. citizens. That all changed with the National Defense Authorization Act 2013. So know they're doing it to you. You're hearing voices in your head and if it's not me, there's a problem. Anyway, in response to the legalization of psychotropic warfare, the ABBA report published in an article writing, Psychotronic weapons are those used to act to take away a part of the information that is stored in a person's brain. 
it is then sent to a computer, which reworks it to the level needed for those who need to control the man. And the modified information that is reinserted into the brain. The weapons are used against the mind to induce hallucinations, sickness, mutations in human cells, zombification, and even death. Included in this art- article are WHF generators, X rays, ultrasound, radio waves. What Kershaw was working on at the time of her death, unfortunate death, could have been key to what happened to her, namely who did it. This tragedy at the highest level, her brave journalism exposed a sick truth. Governments around the world are not attempting to subjugate you, have been, will be, are doing it. Subjugate the people in many nefarious ways. Mind control is something that needs to be identified, needs to be watched. If Kershaw had tapped into new information, odds are she created more enemies. And how those enemies chose to deal with her, we may never know in full effect. But her work remains, and I encourage everyone to check out her New York Times article, which I have on the page. It's a wonderful expose of journalism, informative, edgy, came with risks. Journalists have almost disappeared. True journalism, challenging governments, is the essence of revolution. And right now, even though some of you may not have seen it, the United States is in clear need of revolution. Apple versus FBI court case. Ultimate proof of that, the government continues to overreach, go unchecked. We need to protect people who are actually working for us, journalists like her. Her death is sad, and yet another painful loss to us all. Now these repeating sounds, which again was leaked, I don't know, well, I do know why they try to hide it, but here he is. This has led people to suggest that the timing is somewhat coincidental. Scientists have managed to pinpoint this location. Based on the age of the galaxy that it came from, they suggest that the burst wasn't coming from an early star activity. This isn't the sound that a star makes when it's being born or exploding. This is something else. At first it was commented that this could be the collision of two neutron stars. But if it was such, it would have happened once. It wouldn't repeat over a number of years. And the numbers of years, the numbers they use are interesting to say the least. This discovery suggests It absolutely wasn't an event like that. In fact, it's most likely explanation for these repeating sounds. Something exotic. A young star may be rotating with enough power to emit extreme bright pulses. The stars might not belong to a galaxy, per se. They're just skirting around the issue, and this is why I'm saying this thing is moving. It can't be sitting still. So the next thing they want to do is to pinpoint exactly where these signals are coming from so they can get a better idea of the activity. Something's coming. Hopefully for dinner. (laughs) And not for the whole, okay, we're going to blow up the earth thing. So once we have precisely localized this, They can see if it has anything to do with anything we've seen before. And finding the host galaxy of this source is critical to understand its properties. Now, of course, these repeating radio bursts, 
appear to have a different origin to the one-offs. It doesn't mean that the hypothesis put forward last week is wrong, that it's some young star doing some thing that we have never seen it do. But it's always a good day in science when they find a mystery that they don't completely block out and lie to. Although these cosmic radio waves could have come from a star quake, which I had never heard of, could have come from a mysterious explosion in space, but only if it continues to explode. <laughs> this was um, what they were telling us at first. It made me laugh. I'm like, so is it exploding? Did it explode one time? How come it keeps exploding? What's going on? Where are the worlds? Someone come for dinner? <laughs> it's moving. It's a ship. I'm going for aliens. And speaking of aliens, you know, when I was telling you about certain odd DNA markers in our brothers and sisters from Europe, well, they found another one. They've also found a new hominid species. And we're not talking monkey. We're not talking alien. Exactly. But they were not going to show us. Which is odd. Who is it? Anyone from Europe who um, wants to go to the island, please tell me. Now, we won't go into that story today. It's a bit offensive. I'm a little bit starting to wonder where are you guys from? What started this? How come it started 6,000 years ago? I don't know. We'll talk about it another time. Where I can actually put uh, two words together and make a coherent sentence because I'm sounding a little rambly today. So let's do our update, our event calendar. We'll go back into my jumping jack flash hypothesis. Not just mine, a lot of us are th thinking it right now. Down and dirty version of this, anyway. Because there has been substantial revision to this. Nothing about the conclusions or predictions has changed. This is an understanding of what is happening why it's happening, and what are the events. Here's the what. Of course, they are triggering other events that are bad. So, the waters of the earth are now pluming, suffocating methane, deadly hydrogen sulfide, both highly flammable gases. Ancient anaerobic bacteria Anarchia that predate oxygen using life are reassuming dominance on our planet. As part of their life cycle, these bacteria emit hydrogen sulfide. As a consequence, the oceans, the lakes, the seas have begun to bloom in increasing amounts of hydrogen sulfide into the atmosphere. This is an ancient extinction event. Hydrogen sulfide is likely the culprit in many, if not all, previous extinction events. It is a deadly, broad spectrum poison. It is lethal to humans with one or two breaths. In concentrations of one part per thousand. In other words, the air you breathe is 99.9% .9 clean and 0.1% hydrogen sulfide, then you're going to be dead after one or two breaths. It is also water-soluble gas and will contaminate the water. It is a heavier than air gas, so it will tend to leak out. Low-lying areas such as rivers, lakes, seas, oceans, valleys, ravines, ditches, quays, bays, gorges, canyons, basements, 
underground facilities, etc. Highly flammable, reactive with numerous substances, including but not limited to copper, rusty iron, steel. Um, nitric acid, sodium hydroxide. So at very low concentrations, hydrogen sulfide is said to smell like rotnicks. However, you should not count on being able to smell anything. It doesn't always work like that. So, these gases, especially hydrogen sulfide, will accumulate. Methane is slightly more buoyant than normal air. So, will be all around, especially higher in the atmosphere. We'll tend to contaminate our atmosphere from the top down. And then we have something else going from the bottom up. The gases are sickening and killing oxygen using life all around the world including us, as our atmosphere is increasingly poisoned because both gases are highly flammable because our entire civilization is built around we make fire, basically, and flammable things and flammable fuels, combustion. This is leading to more fires more explosions. This is an extinction level event that will definite both the biosphere and the population. It is debatable whether or not humankind can survive this event. Why is it happening? Simple as answer, heat. These ancient anaerobic bacteria that produce hydrogen sulfide is part of their life cycle. They like warm environments. They are older than us. They like environments rich in biomatter and devoid of this really thing, this wonderful thing that I'm so fond of, oxygen. The warmer the waters of the earth become the less oxygen they hold. And for years, we have been telling you about dead zones spreading throughout the oceans. That's what dead zones are. Low oxygen or no oxygen areas. In recent years, there have been many large-scale oceanic die-offs. Millions of fish bubbling up dead. These events are blamed on the low TDO levels. TDO stands for total dissolved oxygen. So in other words, you've been told that life in the oceans is dying because of low oxygen levels. That's precisely the environment that the ancient bacteria that emit hydrogen sulfide love. The corpses of the fish are themselves biomatter. They would be on the bottom of the ocean right now. Those are the ones that we don't see washed up dead. Those bacteria will eat the corpses, essentially turning the dead fish into a poisonous gas, which then kills more fish, and on and on and on. So trait chain reaction. Where's it coming from? Obviously, two possibilities, above and below. And it's actually both. The ice started melting around the planet. Whether that was because of human pollution or cycles of the sun and the galactic alignments or else at this point is completely irrelevant, at least to me. I'm doing the whole, wow, not caring. I would be hesitant to blame humans too much. 
though, since this has all happened it's before humans existed at all, it happened so not our bad this time. Not completely our bad this time. Any case, ISIS have melted. Vast quantities. Quadrillions of tons have self-relocated from land to ocean. Water is an interesting substance in terms of mobility. In solid form, it's more or less immobile. But it turn it to liquid, it moves by itself. It heads downhill. As that mass has made its way to the oceans where the Earth's crust is, thinnest. We have been witnessing a number of rising quakes, volcanic eruptions. An older theory of mine, the theory of mass-induced seismic applications, I like to call it MISA, just because I like that name, explains this a bit more. But to summarize this theory, which was retroactively collaborated 2012 by one of the best universal geological departments on this planet says that land-based ice melts and that mass moves to oceans faults, volcanoes in or near the oceans that are close to the tipping points they will be pushed over the edge this will result in more volcanoes, more volcanic eruptions, especially in the oceans and near the coastlines. So interesting about this and why I started noticing the Mesa theory, because it was published Christmas Day, 2010. I have mentioned Jap Japan prominently many times. So what happened 2.5 months after the Mesa theory was published? Japan was hit by one of the largest quakes in recorded history. And where did that quake occur? Right off the coast. And if you've been paying attention to large quakes, volcanic eruptions over the last few years, you can see that the Mesa theory is proving itself right before our eyes. There have been many, 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 many large ocean, oceanic quakes, volcanic eruptions near coasts or underwater in the last few years. We hear less about the subservance volcanic eruptions because either we don't have enough eyes around the world to see these, and because most of the eyes are watching the volcanoes 2,000 feet. No, well, most aren't watching the ones 2,000 feet underwater, but the other ones. And because, well, those that know aren't going to tell us. It is probably these oceanic volcanic eruptions that are adding to the large amounts of heat in the oceans as magma moves closer to the surface. And if you're not seeing it, come to Canada. I've had le the least amount of snow I've seen in my adult life this winter. This is something else. And these volcanic eruptions themselves, if they're not happening up here, they're happening under the water, they were themselves caused by the relocation of enormous mass amounts of mass from the thick continental plates which are moving to the thin oceanic plates as Earth's ice has melted away. The melting was caused by heat entering the system probably from above. Yep, something's coming. What is it? Got nothing. It's big. It's hot. I'm not impressed. So, this increase in oceanic heat, which is both, at least disassociating the methane caltrate, 
deposits. Expanding the variable habitat for these ancient bacteria that produce hydrogen sulfide. The process is self-reinforcing once it has started. The methane entering the atmosphere will add to the warming. The more, well, which will melt more ice, which will result in relocation of yet more mass from the land to the sea which will cause more volcanic eruptions. In other words, the trigger on this extinction event has been pulled. We're watching the bullet plow through our bodies. Human civilization. Our hand has already been dealt, and it's a very bad one. We're going to have to play it out. humans will sicken. Obviously there will be animal deaths, especially oceanic species. It's looking like some of the reactors, maybe even Japan, are not leaking as much. But there is something else going on. Other species are sickening and dying too. Sometimes animals are going crazy from neurological damage caused by the hydrogen sulfide's neurotoxic properties. Some animals foaming at the mouth as a result of chemical damage from their lungs. Predators will attempt to adapt to these changes in the biosphere. This will turn our pets or us into an alternative food source. All oxygen-using species will suffer, but their various reproductive capacities, insects, fungi, and some species of plants will fare best and live and survive this. The world may for a very significant amount of time be dominated by these species. We will see a sickening and a death especially near or downwind of low-lying areas such as bodies of water. People found dead will show no signs of injury. And this will include the young and the healthy. Humans will go insane due to neurological damage. There will be increased violence, untriggered violence that perhaps they can't do anything about. So when I hear of 12-year-olds putting a 5-year-old in the hospital and they are near and surrounded by a lot of water, I'm talking about the uh, Native Reserves up north. Some people will be seen foaming at the mouth. As has happened in a number of incidents over the past year, violence, sometimes insanely savage, on the rise, especially amongst the young, whose neurologies aren't hardened yet. People will sometimes experience bruising for no reason. Memory will erode. Some people will forget who they are entirely. That's already happened in at least two cases, recent ones. Renal problems, e.g., um, kidneys, will escalate, as is happening with um, crop workers off the western coast of Central America. Some people will experience a twitching, like jerking, similar to that caused in Parkinson's or Tourette's. I don't think that's why I swear really bad. I think that's just me. Although I did, I used to tease my son, that's it, I got the Tourette's, and I throw myself on the ground and twitch. Not that one. So people sometimes will suddenly lose the ability to speak for a short, short term, calling them the flirtations. 
a problem experienced by a number of newscasters and Judge Judy. Do you remember? Remember that? There will be unexplained hazmat events, usually involving odors. Eventually, entire populations of cities will experience symptoms en masse. Crops are going to be devastated by droughts, hailstorms, fires, rising UV levels, poisoning. As long as human die-offs keep pace with the decline in crop productivity, this may not be a huge problem. If food production declines faster than the human population does, then we will see widespread starvation social problems that go along with that. You will see this all happening. What is happening can't be hidden. Instead, you are going to be sold stories about the why. Fairy tales. Interesting events. Fantasies. Because that's the only way to keep the truth from you. To hide the lie inside of the lie and inside of the why deeply this neighborhood blew up because of a gas leak this man incinerated in his car because of an electrical problem these millions of fish die because of low TDO levels that giant thunderous house shaking explosion off the coast was a sonic boom that rotten egg odor you smelled was a natural occurring methane release. Sometimes the stories you'll be told may even be truthful, but often they won't. This event is underway. And it is the not only it is not the only thing being hidden from you. And I think we all know that. So, let's do some of the event updates that I've been posting more and more often. What's going on? Now, this one again is from... Um, the first takes a couple of days to put them together. A lot of mysterious explosions. Huge amounts. I won't even read those. I'm going over. But again, especially if you're close to water. More animal die-offs? Oh my god. Four million salmon died in the Chile, um, Chileo and ASEAN region. So this is Chile. Four million. That's freaking huge. Oh, and I can't read you that one. It's Spanish. <laughs> Wait, is there an English? Oh, I found the English. Okay. I forgot to tr hit the translate button. So four companies in the sector have reported so far. Four million fish at one point. And the salmon industry is embroiled in crisis after crisis. Salmon are doing well with these problems. This is why they are selling genetically modified fish because the real salmon can't, aren't doing well. That's why they're all like super buff salmon. The real salmon can't survive this. So anyway, Due to financial situation faced by several um, companies in the sector, low prices and regulatory changes seem to be fails in production. So they're going to lie as to why. Also, in this negative scenario, is added to new one in recent weeks. Harmful algae bloom, known as a bloom of algae. Yeah, we get that. <laughs> According to 15 farms in one region. So those ancient things are coming up, basically. Four production companies 
salmon have been, um, lower amounts of salmon have been reported since last Friday. And now they're saying it's 5 million fish are dead. First company that goes on, do we care about that? Doesn't matter how many companies are, they're reporting it. It's a lot of fish. 5 million fish in a, within hours. Uh-huh. And what about thousands of fish in one lake in Australia? Thousands. 800 ducks found dead in reservoirs in Spain. Fish dying in a seven kilometer stretch in the river between Midar and Men Jumal. This is India. A humpback whale washes ashore dead. Scotland. Now, the corpses in low-lying areas is also horrific. Incredible amount that's coming on. Did you guys used to watch American Gladiator? Well, one of those guys. Now, we could say it was a roided up heart attack, I guess. But they're calling it a medical episode. What is a medical episode? It's kind of like those heart incidents. Not a heart attack, but a heart incident. Which really kind of scares me because of, you know, my dad who had a heart incident. Of what? And he lives surrounded by water, as I I do, too. We'll have to keep our eye open on it. But we do have a new zombie file. And the month just started. Okay, here's the story. Man breaks into a home. Naked. (laughs) Okay, let's talk about this naked. Oh, naked at Walmart. And then charged with Berkeley. So he burgled and then he decided he's going to take his naked butt somewhere else. So, Louisville, Kentucky. Man found naked in a Walmart. He's been charged in a residential burglary. That happened a short time before his arrest. According to a police report, officers responded to a woman's home reporting a break-in. The victim told police that no man entered her home through the back door, then ran from the home wearing a blanket. Short time later, officers found him in Walmart. I'd be really interested to see what aisle he went in. Was he looking for water? Because supposedly these events have a tendency to raise the body temperature could be why they're acting like they they have a fever. I don't know. It's weird, for sure. When we um, talk about these things, I, I'm telling you, I think these events are all related. Yes, there could be the whole bunch of Yeah, the government's doing the fracking is wrong. But fracking has been done for a long time. Governments have been screwing with us for a long time. I'm seeing these events increasing lately. I don't know. especially the die-offs by the ocean. Now, animal attacks, another elephant um, stops to death, his handler. Now, I realize that animals are treated very, very badly on this planet. But elephants are notoriously gentle and take that far too much than they should. But this has been increasing. The sinkhole, so land 
subsistence events. Sinkhole collapsed as part of a highway, Texas. Sinkhole opens the street, and I have um, a link to these events under um, events today. Sinkhole opens Charleston, West Virginia. Sinkhole closes part of a rope, uh, a boat ramp, Texas. And even infrastructure collapses as in buildings just disappearing. A vacant army building partially collapses Massachusetts. Building partially collapses. This is Jamestown, New York. Former church collapses, Wellington, West Virginia. Building under construction, um, coastal, Casablanca. Three killed, three injured, just collapses. Water main breaks. Flooding ensues, coastal Mission Beach, California. Now the stories of interest go along with what I was saying. Two, pic two people sicken from an unknown cause at college. This is Wandsworth area, coastal London. Now, remember, all of these events are from the exact same day, first of the month. Methane levels rising rapidly, of course, in the Arctic. Horrifically rising. And scientists are now beating the alarm. Levels of this methane increasing so rapidly that they're seeing alarming development. They were warning about this, this very sharp incline from 2013 to 2014. But the measurements in 2015 say that this has continued in an astronomical rate. The levels of methane, which is the second most important greenhouse gas. Again, they're blaming it on human activities. I don't know, guys. And compared with the global average, the levels of methane have gone far more up, especially at Norwegian weather stations. I think it's because they're looking into it. Now, as the Arctic rose, Alaska is baking. And again, one of the warmest, warmest winters ever recorded. Now, it's shockingly warm in the Arctic. Some seven degrees above average has oozed into um, Alaska, which is experiencing the mildest recorded winter ever. And so far, Alaska's temperature this year has averaged about 10 degrees above normal, ranking third. Actually, no, ranking third warmest, I guess, back until 1925. Unusual warm temperatures, profound lack of snow are affecting areas all over the state. Index, which ranks the severity of winter, shows Anchorage is having one of the gentlest winters on record. In one 50-day stretch, January, February, Anchorage was warmer than normal on 49 of them. 49 of 50 days. Other parts of southern Alaska have seen temperatures remain above normal for four, more than 50 consecutive days. And for the first time on record, not a single observing location in Alaska has recorded a temperature of 50 below or colder. It's the first time ever. They don't get snow that changes the entire planet. They don't get cold that changes the entire planet. So as the Arctic grows, Alaska bakes off burns off. Without snow there, our temperature changes on the, on the planet. Freak, 
freak, freak, freak hailstorms hit Saudi Arabia. Absolutely bizarre. Heavy rains, hailstorms. This again, March 1st, all this happened March 1st. And I have a link to that so you can go see. And it's from Strange Sounds again. Because people are starting to hear this and starting to carry on. It would be way easier if I could say this is CERN. It's not CERN. CERN's doing an entirely different thing. Working with the AI, most likely. Now, we had a massive snowstorm that hit Japan. 130 flights were grounded. Thousands are now without power. Storm dumps on before inches of rain in four hours in Brazil. Landslide kills two. Flooding ensues. Heavy flooding turns a road to rivers in Peru. The army has been sent in to help. Vietnam hit by the worst drought in 90 years. Eastern Mediterranean drought likely to be the worst in nine centuries. Met Office predicts sudden atmospheric, well stratospheric warming to bring cold weather to the UK. Strange sounds heard in Quebec. Um, Assumption, Quebec. Matter of fact, those moaning sounds. Plunging um, manufacturing numbers could mean that it's time to hit the panic button for the entire global economy. NASA is paying $18,000 for people to lay in bed and smoke pot. And I've always thought NASA stood for never any spliffs available. The times are changing. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you soon.